Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and Coco's Creator 2.1.1 was just released. It doesn't sound that substantial, but actually there is quite a bit to it. Now the thing is Coco's Creator, uh, with the switch to the 2.x branch, also switched to a 3D renderer on the back end. And until now, that hasn't really meant a whole lot, but as of this release, there is a whole lot more 3D functionality in this previously 2D only game engine. Speaking of which, if you're interested in learning more about Coco's Creator, I do have a full tutorial series that I will link it down below that focused on the 1.9 branch back when things were still in uh, 2D only. But today we're going to look at uh, Coco's Creator 2.1.1 and the new 3D functionality, which is very much a work in progress, but it does show you what is coming soon. So here you see Coco's Creator. It is a completely free game engine. It is not open source, but it is free. Um, and uh, the new functionality, again, all revolves around the fact that there's that underlying 3D renderer. So let's take a quick look at what that means. So here is your traditional scene. And in your scene graph, you could come in here now and go create. And you'll notice now there is a 3D node, a camera, and light options. So we're going to create a new node. We're going to create, um, we'll create a sphere. So here we go. We have a new sphere in our world. We'll select it. And as you can see, you can now move it around. That sphere itself also has a material on it. In this particular case, a default material. Now materials is very much not fully flushed out and not really functional yet. But let's go ahead and create a material for this guy. So we're gonna go into assets, say new, and then create material. And you'll notice once again, it says experimental or experiment. So see here, we now have a creation of a material created for it. With it selected, we can choose the uh, built-in effect. And we're gonna switch this one over to Pong shading. And you see we can apply a color to it, such as say red, and we'll apply that. So now what I can do is select our sphere, drop our material over in the material slot, like so, and it did not work. Why did you not work? Built-in Pong, apply. Over here, oh yeah. So now we're gonna feature the next part of the 3D functionality that was added. So go back here, grab our canvas, we're gonna right click, we're gonna create, and you'll notice we should create a light. So now that we have lighting in our scene, our material shows up, which makes sense. Um, light's pretty simple, you've got directional point and spotlights. Uh, you can change the intensity out, you can set up the shadows on them, so we can cast hard shadows or no shadows, and we got shadow settings right here. Pretty straightforward overall, and otherwise it is just another thing in the scene. So. Uh, as we move it around, it should affect the scene accordingly. Uh, let's make this one a point light. There we go. So let's move that around. I think we're uh, behind our, our object here. So what we can also do now is switch into a 3D mode. So go up here, we'll go to 3D, and instead of just being the normal 2D viewport, we now have a full functioning 3D viewport like so. Now I think we need a lot more intensity on this light. Is that doing anything? Oh no, I guess it's not an intensity I want, it's range. There we go. So there is our light in our scene in full three dimension. Now you can navigate around, right click, and I'm orbiting, uh, middle mouse button on panning, scroll wheel to go in and out. You can also use the WASD keys to, when you've got the mouse held down, you'll notice the top left corner, and then you can use WASD keys to navigate around the zoom, the, the zone you're in, um, pretty straightforward overall. And on top of that, if you want to go ahead and bring in 3D objects, that's really simple, but again, kind of functional. So here is a full flushed out FBX object. I'm gonna drop that into my assets folder. It will go ahead and import it. And now you will notice this is available. So I'll go back to my root canvas and drag her into the scene. Now, one thing I noticed is these things are coming in very small. So grab the root node and we're gonna scale this guy up a hundred fold. There you go. And there is our model from that we just imported like so. So you've got basic primitives, you've got full 3D objects in. Now what I'm finding is uh, materials are not coming in correctly. And um, let's grab my light, intensify my light a bit. Actually, let's just change my light back to a spot. No, what did we start as? Directional, there we go. So there we see a whole lot more detail of our object. So the, the polygon, the polygonal model is being brought in. The entire armature is being brought in, as you can see right here. Uh, but for some reason, animations are not bringing it, being brought in correctly and neither are materials. So um, you'll notice if I select uh, this object right here in the base, uh, there is a material, it just doesn't seemingly work or doesn't wasn't seemingly brought in. Now I haven't played a whole lot around if the material was separate to the FBX file, if it would work or not, uh, but I did run into that problem there. You can of course assign your own materials 
to your objects like so and you can uh but i don't know again how you're gonna get around texturing i haven't played with this a whole lot for the import aspect but what i have noticed is if i bring in an, an animated um model uh, the animations are not making it through so i don't know if that's a work in process feature or something else is going on but as you can see the 3d functionality in your 2d game is quite evolved and at any time you can switch back to full 2d um so you can have your 3D objects and your 2D scene mixed together quite seamlessly. So if you're creating a 2.5D game and you want to have some of your assets be in 3D, uh, that is one of the advantages of going to a full-blown 3D renderer that most game engines use these days. Um, and that's kind of the, the new major points here, at least in the uh, uh, that I'm going to demonstrate today. Now we're going to flip over and take a look at the release notes for Cocos Creator 2.1.1. Uh, again, we saw a lot of it. So 3D scene editing is obviously the big one. That was the ability to tog toggle in and out. Oh, I didn't show you this one as well. There's also a new panel here for game preview. Um, and you can take this guy out and you can dock it wherever you want. So say we wanted to put it here. And it is a view of your 3D game actually running. Um, so that is definitely a useful thing to have. Then I'm back over here. So we had uh, 3D lighting and shadows, which you saw that in action. There's an updated edit box component. Uh, you can set the text label, placeholder label, and background noise separately, making them more flexible. Add text shadow rendering component. Support for dynamically created 3D primitive models. So everything we just created uh, using um, this mannerism. So right-click create uh, 3D primitives. You can also do that in code using the cc.primitive uh, module. Integrated material system. This is in beta. Support for material systems allows to create material and effect slash shader resource types. Uh, it should uh, be noted that the current material system is mainly provided for internal use of the engine is for developer preview. So like I said, this stuff is not fully ready for prime time for everything. But you then on top of that, you have a number of lesser uh, improvements and uh, engine improvements, editor improvements, and then a number of bug fixes. I will link an article with all of these um, in it as well. I don't link directly to forums anymore because of YouTube's new policy on linking. Uh, but you can see, it's it's not really a prime time release. This isn't stuff that you can turn around and immediately start using tomorrow because it's kind of the first steps towards adding this 3D. And I also don't think you can ever expect Cocos Creator to be a full-blown 3D game engine. You know, you could use it to create 3D games and if you want to roll all the systems yourself, but there's so much functionality, a full fat 3D game engine like Unreal Engine or um, Unity or even Godot provide that just they would have to start implementing. But I think more what you're going to see here is for creating a uh, 2D or 2.5D style game. So if you wanted to bring in your animated 3D models for your character and integrate them into a 2D world, or if you wanted to bring in a 3D background for a 2D system, that is the kind of functionality that they're working towards here. And from what I've seen here with the ability to add uh, a 3D view, lighting, um, and animated models and primitives and everything else that's there, once they get that uh, effects and shader system in, it's going to be really solid in that regard. It could definitely compete with other engines that do this kind of stuff, such as the default engine, which allows you to bring in 3D models that are animated and integrate them into your scene. Or of course, Godot, which can work in like a hybrid 2D and 3D mode. Um, but it's nice to see additional options. I, I wish they didn't break their API as much as they do. That was my biggest complaint with Cocos going from 1.x to 2.x. But it does look like the addition of this 3D renderer is going to be a useful feature. Okay, so that is it. That is the update to Cocos Creator 2.1.1, the new 3D renderer is bringing new 3D functionality, the new game preview mode, shaders, materials, but all in a very NAS and, and you know, in need of development form. But uh, what do you think? Is it uh, an interesting looking feature or is this like an engine that you just don't really have that much interest in? By the way, if you do have interest in it in the 2D world, I do have that full um, tutorial series and I've linked that down below. All right. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.